What is going on, world champions? We should hopefully now be live on YouTube, on Rumble, on Hild. Welcome to the chat. Oh, it reset itself. How fun. How fun. Say hello and welcome. Blueprint, hello, Jerry Singleton and Dean Yeager members. How is it going? Good to see you guys here. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Severe and pilled. All right, there they're coming. I, uh, it all, <laughs> the reason I'm like two minutes late is because, uh, I launched it about a minute ago and it crashed. So I had to start it again. We lost all the original chats there on the screen. They'll still be in the live chat on your guys' ends. YouTube, Rumble, and Pilled. I think I'm going to leave X off today. Uh, not a lot of people watching the show on X. Honestly, a couple guests with me today. First one is the Harambe phone. Hello, Harambe phone. Hello. Hello. I thought I wasn't going to uh, have a guest. I whipped this guy up. And then, thankfully, thankfully, he, he uh, stepped in. It's Dodger. Welcome. Happy Sunday. Hopefully you, you guys can uh, all hear him okay, too, quickly. I'm going to keep on the chat, but I believe we shouldn't have double audio this time. But, Do Dodger, you're going to be my guest today. As I awkwardly turn down this jungle music, it looks like you got an, some nice sunshine down there. Yeah, I put the J.J. Uh, Abrams lens flare effect on for the uh, for the bigot. That is what that show. stupid crap is. Um, he loves his lens flares. What are you going to do? He just stands there with a flashlight in the corner, like hitting it. <laughs> uh, but you are in, are we allowed to talk about where you are? Sure. Yeah. Uh, you're in Texas, right? I'm everywhere, John. You're <laughs> everywhere. Uh, and uh, let me actually pull I'm that up Texas. here. World War Three. We're ready to talk about World War Three here in a minute, but before we get to that, uh, we're talking about the Three CC Third Continental Congress. You've done all of our logos and things like that, by the way. So thank you. There we go. Thank you. Uh, I've moved it to the front page of the website. Just kind of this overview. But there we are. All right, the Yellow States. You're in Texas with the sunshine. There you are, North Texas, Jack Dodger, mother mother friend friend of all mothers everywhere mothers and fathers is what mothers that stands and fathers. for everybody's got like this weird idea that i'm just crass and uh but that's you that. this is you here and then we have a in the video just i didn't get myself quite centered in this circle did i uh what are we what are you gonna do but um the link in the video description of um the content that does the the merch that you've made for the three CC. Give me a quick rundown on that. What items are available? Yeah. Oh, there's so much. It's kind of an experiment. I'm trying to promote cross promoting other content creators. Like I came up loving your stuff as well as a few others that I'm featuring in my store. But the idea is like, Hey, I make stuff. Let me make stuff for you, for you. And if it sells, we'll split that and, slowly fund our squeaky wheeled machines to to full 10 cylinders you know all 10 of them sorry there's some pretty cool stuff on there there's like shoes and shirts and oh you you've got bomber jackets some like pf flyer looking joints i do I've, like those I've made you denim jackets huge you Every surely uh, have seen the sandlot Several That's my times. main uh, first video I ever made is a mashup of those two movies. It's The Sandlot and The Great Dictator. Which, have you ever seen The Great Dictator? Yeah, the uh, Charlie Chaplin. That was back when I realized his speech is at um, this fucking Zoom. So the Charlie Chaplin speech is at exactly 128 beats per minute. I paid this damn Zoom thing. We were, I was in this and I just got a warning. Uh, yes. You're going to get kicked off in about 10 minutes. Even though I paid it. I can, I can jump back in. Yeah. Or maybe we'll, um, we'll reconnect at that, at the break during the half and then just do, cause I'd really, that's really what I wanted to have you for. And we're going to start doing this. And this of course, as always is a fun experiment the first time, but, 
Uh, the people that joined us last week as sort of part of the Congress, uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with you guys would be awesome, especially if you're like Dodge or you have your own channel and things like that. And so we'll talk about that more too. But um, your pilled channel, all the work you do, things that you have, art that you can buy, things you do for other people's channels, etc. Um, but uh, du during the week, so so you go live during the week a couple times, is that right? I'm as many times as possible i'm i'm hanging with uh my buddy severe and on who who does uh red pill rap and right music based content and it's usually nightly nightly okay right on um so yeah so once again i've screwed this all up with this stupid or zoom has or who knows but um i'll give you like a two minute warning here and then if you're cool with that when we take our halfway break i'll call you back you know what i'll probably end up doing is i'll do that whole sermon thing first and then we'll just 45 minute it. What do you say? Sounds good but I'm me, super man. jealous you're the of, champion. Uh, of where you're sitting. It looks awesome to be outside. I would love to set up an outside show. Um, that would be very cool. Uh, but Dodger, thank you for joining us. And then the other people we talked in the Gilded about doing it as well. We'll talk more. But uh, that link also in the description. That is the best place to get in touch with us directly to be part of something like this 3CC. Uh, so in California, William Maines, he had joined us. We'll get a nice one-on-one -on -one with him. Uh, but it's starting, it's to fill, starting to fill up already. And then right below this here is some uh, instructions on how all of that works. So follow Dodger on Pilled, says Disco Daphne. You got a lot of pill Pilled people in here today, which is cool. Lady Mimi, Kane Chris, Severe Anon, of course. Would like to get back on your show and talk some actual music, things like that. Circle Jerk 3CC, I like it. It is, to a degree. Uh, at the bottom there, Chronic Abundance Nicholas, my man. Oh, wow, lots of, okay, hold on. I'll have to come back to that one. But uh, again, in the chat, the green are channel members, and then you should see the logo of the platforms people are watching this on. So Pilled and YouTube and Rumble for this particular show. Uh, but, uh, something about art. So you're, so you talk music with Severe Anon here quickly. Uh, your main thing seems to be more visual graphic marketing kind of stuff. True? False? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. It's been my whole life. It's, it's art. Anything visual of it's like the, the loner kid. So art was my world and I've been studying it. I'm 43 now. I've done sculpting, painting, illustration, copywriting sports photography videography anything vi visual i've at least tried you have some some incredible stuff and as much as i'd like to talk for hours specifically about that i find it much more interesting the story you and i having run into each other the things we work on the things we care about and then of course this whole what is the problem kind of thing the way the things you've dealt with i you seem to be uh and i think i i like to think i'm good at pegging Oh, that's the wrong word to use these days. <laughs> Pigeon. Calm down. I'm pigeonhole. I'm pegging your pigeonhole. <laughs> uh, you seem like a real dude as much as I hate the kind of people who use that term. But a real dude uh, who's seen some real shit. Uh, not, again, not in the way most people, but like truly, you know, real. Uh, and so that is what the second half of this show is going to be. I'm going to give my little quasi-sermon which in this case today is a uh, short story right there. Uh, and uh, get your sort of more personal take on some of that and then just life in general. I guess these... Yeah, I mean, Go ahead. So I, I, I'm not a social media guy. Right, I like, like that. And I, like I came into all this on accident. I stumbled onto something that that led me to a community that I thought, oh, this is cool. And there are people like me. Well, I spent a career selling everything for other companies using visuals. Let me kind of jump in like that and show you guys what I know if you're interested and, uh, and see if we can't utilize everyone's strengths. You give me what you're good at. I give you what I'm good at type of vibe. And it's not how the, the, the world is apparently so i present myself exactly how i am i'm kind of a dick i come from a violent background but i'm also like one of the sweetest people ever 
Like, yeah, I think it's interesting people like you who, uh, I guess I'd probably throw myself into this category also, but you would uh, on paper look like you would be a left wing person. The art. Definitely. What is it about? So I, I think it's very obvious that true artists, at least in today's climate, are by today's definitions are much more right wing true artists you know the act of creating i think is very masculine um yeah i'm also a male artist so you know what are you gonna do but um do you have any thoughts on that how come you're and i guess let me not put words in your mouth i'm you're you're pro trump in a sense you're sort of politically yeah no i'm only here for trump if trump's out i'm gonna steamroll so much of the movement for what they've done. Yeah, well, <laughs> so you, like me, have all these artistic tendencies and creative tendencies, which I think overlaps with accepting hey, interesting, baggy, weird, ty- like, you know, it, weird types. That's not how we came up. So, but why, why Trump as an artist playing devil's advocate? Uh, the fact you. that he unraveled the the world powers with third grade underhand slow pitch softball insults. Dude, was, was it not a work of art? That's how it I. It was genius. It was like I agree. He hasn't even gone in, like he hasn't said anything even slightly offensive, and he's got you guys in total melt meltdown mode. Like, sign me up. This is my dude. Well, again, as an artist, you and you're, you're. I know you're not um, oversimplifying it or making fun of his strategy, saying it was easy to do or simple in that sense. But right. Like, no. I, Right, how how you make a work of art and then you start editing and paring back all the shit that doesn't need to be there. That's and, the hardest part, is. And I mean, you like, make memes like the great perfect childish meme is is like a visual form of a Trump insult in a lot of ways, isn't it? I think it is. It very much is, yeah. and I don't even consider myself a memer really because yeah. like I hold the the bigs like Randall memes, Machiavelli, all those guys. They, they're they're doing stuff with a single image. A setup and a punchline that two is minute like warning by the way mercury two minute, that? Two, yeah, okay. two minute warning the meme the memers are killing it and they totally changed what media is and the effectiveness of what we can do Here, i mean a cultural turning point the meme call i heard a, one of these younger college guys use the meme culture as and i never i don't really think about it that way but we've been exploring that whole like you know you're we're in a cultural change it's hard to appreciate when you're right in the middle of it it's dude you're like on the the what's the faces on the mountain uh Rush- you know, they, Rushmore. Yeah, you're like on the meme culture. So Rushmore. I savagely genocided the natives and then carved my face in their mountain. You know, they were doing that to one another before. I we I'm not a first. I'm not an anti Rushmore guy. It is a huge middle finger though. Huge hey, one. <laughs> I'm a fan <laughs> of it. Said, Don't lose. Don't lose. I like I like everybody getting a little bit of salt. Like it, you can't offend me. All the shit that people say about white guys like me it's like oh the whole history you're we're, you're gonna get kicked off here in any second we'll have to have a whole show about this but you know the the people that were in the new world uh, you know vikings and i think the whole history of this continent is quite a bit more complex too it's not so you know black and white or white yeah, and red we relied to it's not so white and red exactly all right uh, i think you're gonna get kicked anyway but i'm gonna say goodbye to you thank you for joining me around three o'clock or i think two o'clock in texas when I go to break, I'll get back in touch with you. Sorry, okay. man. Sorry about this. Okay. I did. I, I paid for it. They, <laughs> I, I'm kind of curious if it really, like, so now I feel like it's been more than a minute. Yeah, it may just be because the your account hasn't like updated, so it's still sending you via. Have you have you checked your cookies? Nope. 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 It didn't pay. <laughs> What's going on, Chad? We'll be back with Dodger in the second hour. Oh, man, someday when I'm like 100 years old, I'm not going to live that long, but I'd like to go back and watch all these mistakes. It'll be a good time, but severe not Mount Rushmore. American Shogun in the house. Welcome, Shogun, Lady Mimi. New John Word merch designed by Dodger. There is the link. Thank you, Lady Mimi. It should be in the video description as well. What's up, severe? Molo Tulu on YouTube. Perot was the person who got me to realize that our government is our greatest enemy. Ross Perot. OG. 
true OG. I see a, uh, some super chats there. We'll get to those in a minute. Shrapnel, welcome. For the producer fund, Circle Jerk 3 cc says, show us your killer whale solo face. But uh, yeah, World War Three. that was sort of the loose subject of the first hour of this show, of which we still have about 40 minutes left to go, so we will absolutely start talking about that. And then in the second half, I got my little bit of a Sunday sermon because the good deacon is still recovering. He is doing well. He is posting videos over on his channel. Check him out. But he should be back, I believe, within a month, maybe a little bit less. He had all his teeth out. He's getting a gold grill put in. But quickly again, back to the chat again. I saw Kronik earlier. Didn't pay. Yeah, it did. It didn't take my card, so I used my PayPal, and then it accepted it. And we were all talking, having fun, ready to go. <laughs> there he is. So we'll figure out what happened there. But I had it up here. World War Three. What is going on? Oh, we can take him off of there, too. Let me, uh, sorry, buddy. See ya. All right, there we are. Israel, Gaza. Oh, I went the wrong way, didn't I? And now, of course, Iran. And I want to talk about this a little bit, and we'll get the chat in here, too. But um, the ridiculous drone counter strike with six hours of warning. That nothing came of, that now, <laughs> now Iran looks stupid. What the hell was that noise? It was a clown show. What is going on in the Middle East right now? What is going on with Biden and Israel? What is going on with Israel and Gaza still? And then this hilarious Iran shenanigans. So they're proxies and things like that. So quickly on that, and uh, while, you, while you drop your thoughts in here on this, so the proxies, and, and forgive me, I think a lot of people already know this stuff, but so, so the number one theory is that Iran would retaliate through what they call proxies, proxy, proximal, nearby, these uh, terrorist sort of quasi-terrorist groups like Hezbollah. You get the idea, Hamas. And that for whatever reason, people seem to believe that this now is not Iran retaliating. It's somebody else, even though everybody knows it's Iran. And this is this weird, stupid thing, this game that the international community has played. And we do the same thing. And it's all very stupid. Uh, but instead, uh, they do end up actually directly, quote unquote, attacking Attacking, they used that billion dollars uh, that Obama sent them and they bought uh, the biggest Alibaba drone racing order, racing drone order ever purchased. And then they flew these stupid drones slowly, slowly, slowly towards Israel. Say, so, hey, there's some drones coming right there. Do you guys see them? And then they shot them down. And it was dumb. It was dumb. And then you have the uh, international community, which is what it calls itself. It means the Western community. Patting themselves on the back and talking about how ridiculous and stupid Iran looks and how weak they are and blah, 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 blah. This was all so strange. Nope, not those guys. Odessa was all so strange. It was strange. This attack was a stupid. I don't understand. It's Haran. He's Asian. For this particular joke. Why? Is anyone even actually attacking Israel? Is this giant conspiracy thing really true? Are they really setting up a new Israel in Ukraine? Are they just going to do this stupid, ridiculous red heifer crap and let all the actual religious Jews get nuked and just start it all over, all over again with my tax money? With my tax money? Yes. Yes. Fuck you! It's also stupid. I saw somebody in there who I think will agree. There he is on Rumble. It's Pictish. Pictish. How do you... Pictish, which is Thomas Eccles, I believe. 
What is going on in the Middle East? What is going on in the Middle East? Here we go. Jerry Singleton has a thought. All them billions, they let them get access to are funding both sides. I mean, so here we go. Number one, I think it's been fairly well established that ISIS is Israel. ISIS is Israel. Was it always Israel? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. There seems to be this pattern of like these organic groups get going and it can be anything from ISIS to a Magic the Gathering or Warhammer Club of Nerds. Whatever it is, it starts organically. There's a meme about it. There's a meme about how women ruin Warhammer, but it's not women. It's just it's just how it seems to go. So, you know, you have this group of uh, Middle Eastern nerds and they just want to play Warhammer, but just like, you know with people and it's going great and then it gets to a certain size and then Israel's like there's a lot of money in this game and then all of a sudden like three years into it at the Warhammer National Televised Championship this just happened with competitive Tetris okay I about five years ago found competitive Tetris on the internet was a thing classic dress Tetris and it was ridiculous and it was incredible and it was awesome to watch. Of course, as soon as everybody started watching it, then you just got a bunch of idiots in there trying to make money off of it. And like, who can press the button 0.001 seconds faster? Ruined it for everybody. So ISIS having this great Warhammer, this Dungeons and Dragons game. You know, what's his name? The Prios, who was Priosama? That guy was the, uh, he was real. Um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Ah, uh, the the seventeen foot tall one. What was his name? Come on, come on. What was his name? Oh my God, it's kill it's I, it's killing me that this is that I'm blanking on this. Oh Jonas, yeah, no, that's Tetris. <laughs> so I see we have some Tetris watchers. Uh, I'm talking about. Um, What's his, what's his name? The original, not pre-ISIS guy. Nope, nope, nobody else. Nope, 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 the one-eyed guy. Nope, that's not him either. No, not Big Mike. No, this is, no, not Saddam Hussein. Uh, no, not Gaddafi. This is important. We need to get this name out, and I know this name, and I can't believe I can't think of it. Uh, original Afghanistan leader. Eyepatch McCain, Alawaki. Oh, is it Alawaki? Is that who I'm thinking of? It's Al something. It's Al something. I don't think it is Alawaki. It's um, Oh, it's killing me. Nope, not you. Oh, bagged. <laughs> El Sumani, you guys, you guys. All right, I give up. Anyway, what was I talking about? ISIS playing Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, <clears throat> there was a, oh, Mullah Omar, I think. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is that right? That might be right. Is he gigantic with one eye? I think it's Mullah Omar. I think it's this dude. Yeah, that's right. Because now I remember, yeah, because he got the title of Mullah. Yes, this guy. Yes, thank you. Whoever it was. Shit. Shh. Anyway, that was somewhat relevant because Mullah Omar started up this Dungeons and Dragons club for ISIS. And then Osama bin Laden, who is probably better understood as the CIA... 
kind of hijacked it in the same way everything gets hijacked. Anyway, so Israel does this to ISIS, probably, almost certainly. And I'm, I'm talking about there's like literal quotes. This isn't, I'm just not um, making this up. Israel... Uh, Hamas as well. Yeah. 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 Just, oh, they've openly said this. So again, I'm not making this up. They openly say it. So now you have Israel creates ISIS. We leave all these weapons for ISIS, but then there's no need for ISIS and then ISIS disappears and then they pop up when convenient. Iran seems a lot like Israel's ISIS, like the U S to ISIS is Israel to Iran. They just like sort of never really actually do anything until they absolutely have to, and then when they do, it's a clown show. This stupid fake attack, that's what we're talking about. This clown show drone attack. Why the hell would you, if you really want to retaliate, if this is a real retaliation, if you're really in a war, if you're really causing damage, you'd be like, yo, in six hours, some drones are going to come by right over your giant anti-drone system. Good thing nobody saw this coming. It's the stupidest thing. I don't buy it. I do not buy it. Yet at the same time, it certainly seems like in the not too distant past, the U.S. tried to create a color revolution in Iran. Israel also did some stuff in Iran. Thomas Wichter used to cover this a lot. And so, I don't know, a lot of the BS seems genuine. And then this, and then Iran does this. And then all the talking heads say, oh no, World War Three," which is, you know, yeah, in a sense, they want it, but they need people to buy into it. And I think they're having a, a hard time with that. A hard time with that. But read about Mullah Omar. Uh, seemed to be quite religious and quite serious and quite confused when Obama bin Laden showed up and sort of started taking it over. And bin Laden was this rich kid, essentially famous. It'd be like if... Um, <clears throat> You were starting a conservative movement and it started to gain traction and then all of a sudden Donald Trump Jr. shows up and is like, I'll run this now. Not saying anything about Trump or Trump Jr. or anything like that. That's just what I'm saying. Right? So Osama bin Laden is like Trump. He's like a bazillionaire's bazillionaire son. And he's like, yeah, I'm into this. But then he also, Osama bin Laden, said some interesting things about the U.S., who are they performing for? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Who are the performers? What are the factions? It's hard to tell. What are your thoughts? It's all scripted. Atlantis Tosterone. Oh shit, alien testosterone. It's all scripted. It says alien testosterone. Circle Jerk 3CC seems to be inclined to believe that all of our problems instead derive from Eve. I'm not laughing. Sal the hamster. No, if both sides are just posturing to make domestic propaganda for their respective populations. How does this help? Ir How does this make Iran look good, though? And I don't know that. I mean, maybe that is, I don't know. Do they have in Iran some kind of like feedback information media that lets them know that like this was ret retarded and didn't work? Or are they all sitting there, like, watching a video of Israel on fire, like they're 9-11? And, and they, I'm sure that we all have our own compartments of fake shit. But I agree. Uh, uh, lost it there. But that was a great comment. So domestic propaganda. Propaganda, there's two kinds. Well, there's more than two kinds, but, you know. We produce, America produces propaganda, thanks Obama, aimed at Americans. And so, yes, this allows um, Iran to turn to Iranians and say, look what we did, we retaliated. And uh, then Israel, everyone's posturing, posturing, primate behavior, slap in the chest. 
posturing. Sodium Soldier says, CIA, Cody, when you start a local militia and Ben Shapiro shows up. Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro, what a disappointment, I just got to say. Quickly. Yes, like that. There's a great example of that Dungeons and Dragons ISIS game getting hijacked. Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro. Tom McDonald's like, well, he's either directly in on it. I don't think he was until then. I think that was sort of his initiation. But, you know, he's the, the group of your actual friends that brings Ben Shapiro. You're like, damn it, dude. This is where it goes downhill, Tom. Tom. Thomas Eccles, America made propaganda well before Barry Sotero did. <laughs> this is true, too. We'll talk about this in the second hour. It's kind of the point of today's show. Right? The point. But uh, this is all, it's not new. Nothing new under the sun. It's been going on for a long time. Can't hate the player. Hate the game. Lord of the Re, isn't Tom McDonald's girlfriend related to, I don't know, probably. Probably. There's a weird hidden matriarchy out there. It might also be a weird hidden gatriarchy. It's hard to say. Matthew Knight, propaganda. Americans tell our population first on the moon, moon. Russians tell theirs first in space. Matthew Knight, that is a great comment. Nobody's lying. Except, except well. <laughs> Topic for another day. But in a sense, accepting those is true. It's like jazz. It's the note you didn't play. McBeth, see Benny Shekels, Dodger. I'm sorry about Zoom. I'm sorry. Smash the Gatriarchy, Lord of the Re. Jerry Singleton found out today that Jeremy Boring is elected president of a secret group of Hollywood conservative actors called Friends of Abe. Nova Rockefeller is uh, Tom McDub says markets and moto. Is that like genuine Rockefeller? I don't know. I don't know. What is going on in the Middle East? Oh, look, now they got the Hindu stand. <laughs> Everything about this article is incredible. It's number one on Google. It's the Hindu stand times, which doesn't, which seems like that should be a real country. That's good. I don't care. Uh, Nostradamus' eerie 2024 prediction of naval war. There he is, predicting. He's like, man. Man. This feels like some Iran-Israel shit's going to go down in a while. Amid escalating tensions in the Middle East, blah, blah, blah. Uh, prophetic musings. Yes, you've mused very prophetically. Where's the story? Where's the story? Yes, we're familiar. This is uh, whenever you read anything with Nostradamus in it, it's gonna be written at like a third grade reading level too. Red, ad okay, here we go. Here's this thing: Red adversary will become pale with fear, putting the great ocean in dread. That means nothing. That means nothing. I should have done this. I should have made a million dollars doing things like this. I will write as many predictions as you want of things like this. It's like that video. The, 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 it's a great video, but it sucks you can't play anything on YouTube because it all gets copyrighted. But of the guy that's doing the skit of working advice and he can't think of a story, so he gets a dildo and he just throws it at a dartboard. And it's like, you know, meet Thailand's transgendered opium-addicted hookers. That kind of ridiculous crap. That's what Nostra Nostradamus would have been a great columnist advice. He would have popped up his article headline. Red adversary will become pale with fear, putting the great ocean in dread. People just throw money at it. And then like one out of, I don't know, 20 people like me sit there and they're like, what the fuck did you just say? Red adversary will become pale with fear. 
Just nonsense that can mean anything. Anyway. Anyway, I don't even know. Maybe we're just on shrooms and shit. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it either, Harambe phone. Self-aware Harambe phone. Whoop, this one. Self-aware Harambe phone. Oh, man. We lost the magic because now you can tell it's me. Bummer. You were buying it before, though. Until then, everybody thought it was some real shit. Iran's unprecedented attack, success, spectacular success. Israel's, yeah, so this is what I was just bitching about and reading very poorly. This unprecedented attack. Look how much success. Joe Biden asked somebody, nobody cares. I'm done with this movie. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. And then you have um, all this, uh, you know... Trump's been fairly pro-Israel, etc. I mean, he's got to get elected and all that stuff. What I would like is for you guys to consider coming in here and joining or join the Gilded and tell me what you think, genuinely, even to the point of coming on the show. A lot of states need to be claimed here, guys. And you can, of course, join a state that's already been claimed. If you have your own Twitter webpage, make your own content, make stuff, want to sell it, I'm here to help this year only. Use me. Use me. Get in here. This stuff is so ridiculous. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm telling you right now, straight up. I don't know. What is the problem? But what I do know is that this is some clown stuff. The whole Ukraine, whatever. Is this really this thousands of years old secret group? Are we really just little pay pigs? The script sucks and the acting is horrible. <laughs> David Smith. Amen. I mean, it's all so tiresome, as they say. It's all so tiresome. It's all so tiresome. This is a great uh, little piece of art here if you've never seen it. Check this movie out. Empire of Dirt. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I meant it's, it's empire of dust, empire of some form of detritus. The key part is that it's an empire. I think I was confusing Johnny Cash. It's all so tiresome. Everything is fake until proven gay. Orange cat, <laughs> orange cat goods like bruh, bruh. Uh, I don't have it quite aimed on him. Hold on. Hold on. Since I'm here by myself and I can do what I want, hold on. What's up, OCG? He's like, bruh. Keep the volume down. He was reading the book I always forget to promote, The Unconscious Pursuit of Epicurean Ataraxy by the Old Boys of Central Pennsylvania. You guys should read that book. Right there. Some 3D printer shenanigans. That's from the Harambe phone. It's all so tiresome. So tiresome. <laughs> He's really fucking pissed. We have the same personality, this cat and me. I never like. I hated cats. In fact, I got this one because I was turning into Tom Hanks and Castaway when I was YouTubing by myself for five straight years. And man, I thought I hated people. It's a lot of hate in this cat, in the best possible way. In the best possible way. Orange cat, what's going on, chat? I mean, I don't know. So so you do this gallows humor, this James Franco first time, you know. Yeah.
someday I'll pre-program all this stuff into the actual show. And then uh, ideally have somebody somebody volunteering that will press all the relevant buttons. This first time, huh? You're just dying. It's your first one, huh? Is it really hard for you? Is it hard? Got too much media. <laughs> it's also tiresome. Holy cow. Good book would recommend Skunk 12. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for the plug. But, uh, I don't know. That, that, I mean, that's, I don't know if it's because people are like afraid to just say what they think. Here we go. Here's a thought. The angriest ginger. I started streaming in 2019 for a short time, taught myself how to UBS, I would, uh, UBS, to use OBS. I just jammed them together. I portmanteaued it. I would love to be part of a conversation with you, John. been watching your channel since around 2015. Oh, that's that at the start. So, yes, I would definitely be down. Send an email to John Ward Cinematics at Gmail or the, the most surefire way is to join the Gilded and send me a DM in there. You do not need OBS. To join the show. I'll handle all of that. You just need Zoom. You just need Zoom. And then you need me to pay for it. <laughs> and then you need me to pay my Zoom bill. Which I, I, I'm not lying. I did this time. I did it. I did. Alright. And a super chat. And I think it's time. Let's pull those up here real quick. This will look a little strange here for a moment. But let's catch some super chats. I have seen them on YouTube. Circle Jerk 3CC. Thank you for the find John Ward at Producer Fund. Show us your killer whale solo face. Thank you, Circle Jerk 3CC. And JT Wild, everybody is broke, but you deserve at least a burger and some fries, bro. Thanks for being you. Hey, I appreciate that. I will share it with the orange cat who loves. Those are literally his two favorite foods. Burger. Not all this shit on it, just the actual burger. But specifically, like, McDonald's slop burger. Loves it. Equally loves McDonald's French fries. Cats really like salt. Cats can drink ocean water because their kidneys can process salt that well. True story. They love it. All right. Mm, let's get some channel members here. Tuck Twitter. Oh, I really got to work on my um, my scale of these texts. They're hard to read. You should be over there, though, on my other big screen. You live in a zoo. Congratulations for that. We all do. The Matrix, it's called. Sean Stryker. Uh, oops, so we got the conversation going again. But I believe I have all the YouTube Super Chats. Let's go back to live. Let's look at Rumble. Mm -mm -mm. Come on. <laughs> All right, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Don't see any so far. And so we'll say hello to Pill. Thank you for being very active today, Pill, American Shogun. Welcome, Kane, Chris. Uh, who else have I not? I said uh, Disco, Disco Daffy. It's always so hard to read. You guys need to look at John Otter here. There we go. See, he put a capital O, so I know where the Brit Disco Daphne, that second D, capitalize it for me immediately. Kane, Chris, John Otter. So welcome, all of you guys. Good to have you here in the integrated chat here, running solo today. Special guest, the self-aware Harambaphone. Not great at my buttons today. <laughs> OCG over here chilling, enjoying the show, and doing a little bit of reading with a big old mess over there in the 3D printer, and then Dodger got kicked off. We'll have him back here in the second half of the show. We might take a slightly early break. Uh, Dodger, if you're watching, I'll still be about 10 minutes or so for us to reconnect, but that'll give me a second here to figure out what the hell's going on in Zoom, if it's something as dumb as just needing to restart it, and then... Uh, the second half of the show, I have the good quote-unquote uh, sermon for you. It's a short story, Charles D. Ambrosio, 1990, The Point. I believe I actually did do my job here, I'm realizing. 
when you do your job so rarely that you forget when you do do it and that you have stuff ready to go. There it is. This book. I'm going to talk about this. I have a little thing on that, and then it is very, very relevant to some things Dodger already mentioned. Growing up with violence, things like that. Just being a man in America or the world in general or a person. Not a man necessarily, although this particular story has a male protagonist. But we will talk about that. So it is about quarter till a little bit less, quarter till three. So we're going to call this like a 20 20 minute break normally we do a 10 minute break we're gonna need an extra 10 minutes to hopefully get them set up to not have a 45 minute time limit so that we can have as much time as we want there it is there it is very jungly lord of the re i see you there yes you uh, get in touch with me guys if you're interested and then um i don't know if you caught last week but the whole group thing when we figure out all that etiquette these big group chats is going to be a good time 20 minutes or so let's call it uh let's call it 310 to 315 range something like that we're gonna leave it up here live but go do your thing have a snack get a drink have a cigarette and we'll be right back see you around three
We're coming back. We're coming back. I think. I think. We might have Dodger on with us. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, I got to, um, because it's a new meeting. Hold on. Yeah, check your, check your cash and your cookies. You're back. Buenos dias. I am pretty damn sure, but not 100% that there's no longer a time limit on us. It's all right. At least this time I'm not 30 minutes early. Yeah, we're Man. actually uh, about, I just told everybody like 3.15 and they're probably all wandering around. And now here we are. There's probably a way to um, like test all this shit without actually like being on a live It'd be really cool if television worked this way, though. If like every we'll do it live. every commercial break was Bill O'Reilly's "Do It Live" moment, just every I would watch the commercials. I would be right there. You know, it's good content. It's good, it's high raw. quality stuff. Let me bring this down a little bit. Thank you for hanging out again. Um, tru yeah. truly. Um, get that jungle music off here, and uh, you can see the program, right? You see what the audience sees, I believe. I do. I'm sorry to your audience for the hideous creature in the secondary panel. Oh that man, be me. Hello. Pretty um, pretty nasty looking, disgusting. You were expecting me to say to be nice to you there, weren't you? Not no, just completely. I would have been disappointed. Completely agree. If you were. Completely agree in every way. I I take it. I uh, am the champion of encouraging people to insult me and make fun of me. So. It's not personal. Well, good. It's not personal. You, did we just become best friends? We had a, no, we already were, I thought. What? Wait, what? Back up. Wait a minute. Um. So this second hour here, we've got Dodger back. Let me get my Zoom up here. I don't see a countdown anymore. So good sign. If for some reason it does, I don't think it will, but if it does, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But he I, did it intentionally. If I just suddenly disappear, he's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, so, actually pretty, uh, you're breaking up. It was a pretty <laughs> cool uh, disappearance. I'm also just kind of just going to shoot the shit with you here for a few minutes just to, for anybody that happened to wander away and not to miss anything important. But I do have um, the second hour. 
So I have this little bit of a sermon here. It's this, um, let me get that off your face. <clears throat> it's a short story written in 1990 um, called The Point. Oh, I don't have you up here anymore either. Let me get you back up here. Although you can't see this, can you? I can see that, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, right, because you're just you now. So now I don't have like 20 different people trying to mess with Yeah, all right, cool. So uh, this one, and then uh, since you can see it, you should, oh, yep, and then that's a new meeting also. Fun, fun. It is now this one. There you are. Hello. Getting pretty good at this OBS thing. A lot faster. All right, so this book, uh, I sent you sort of an outline of it. Did you, not that you should have, but did you happen to read any of it? Yeah, I did. It, uh, uh, it reminded me of like a Charles Bukowski kind of. Interesting. Interesting. Have you ever read this story or heard of it before? Have not. Have not, no. So this is one uh, you would probably maybe actually have come across if you took any like college English level writing type classes. That is where I first came ab across it uh, quite a long time ago. It's not a super obscure story or anything. Uh, this book of the point, Charles... De Charles of Ambrosia. Charles D'Ambrosio. This guy. Oh, I dashed him somehow. Uh, so it is kind of hard to uh, find the New Yorker. It was published right there, October 1st, 1990. It's behind a paywall. And so that first link I had up, you can buy it. It's about 20 bucks on Amazon. That's where I would recommend going to read it. But anyway, not super obscure. An extremely well-written story, though extremely well written extremely high level um and i will get that into that here in about two minutes uh as soon as we've given everybody enough time to kind of wander back in and also to get it pulled up here <laughs> yeah i want a list of like your favorite authors and shit like there's there's just stuff that you when we talked on the stream the last time when i finally got to ask you about your music like your answer is strangely like it, almost verbatim exactly my methodology with the imagery is utilizing psychological triggers and familiar formatting in order to solicit the view and they don't know that I'm doing it well you and think so of, I like, mean yeah it doesn't so it you think about it like I do which is like a problem solving thing and how what what solution will work the best and so it's not unlike you know an engineer would it's it's the reason there's certain ways you do things certain ways you start to see that i see that pattern in building a house just like i see it in creating art in you know fixing a car or learning how to play basketball it's all you're all building this thing yeah mhm mm mhm mm it's all um, about yeah the tool usage what are you trying to achieve do you have a specific audience do you have the same message for different demographics that you're trying to reach yeah so. you probably understand that better than anybody is yeah sometimes you're making stuff for an audience but sometimes you're you're not also those are two different processes exactly although like the, the stuff 90 percent of the stuff i make i make because i want to see it yeah but like if it's with intent especially to promote another creator's intellectual stuff then it's like all right what is what break down your demographics for me mm -hmm. age groups sex like all that stuff's important i i'm a hundred percent like that myself i'm also trying to get better at being on the flip side of it which is not just blindly promoting anything and everything i like my endorsements quote unquote to have meaning and you're they have meaning when it comes to the stuff you do and i understand you're an artist like you, you do your process is maybe confusing to people that are not like you and i even your personhood may be confusing to people not like you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's weird, man. <laughs> but, um, and then, of course, I've brutalized you with my process uh, and how all over the place it can be and whatnot. But in you understanding that, you've just made... That's what's interesting you to me. You maintain though. contact, and then you give it time. And we've both lived long enough now. Like, when you're in your 20s, you feel like you got, like, we got to finish this now. We got to do it now. We got to... We gotta do it's good enough which sooner or later the op you have the opposite problem when you hit 40 which is like man this idea is so great i just want to keep working on it and you never actually do it 
Yeah. No, I'm right in that sweet spot where it's yeah. I'm down for the long you game. You get I shit the done, game. man. Like, and it's good. And You've do got it. and and so that is all highly unusual, I think. And, it uh, is kind and, of, and I don't like. It's not. I don't say that to like pat myself on the back, but it's like no. You do yeah, the same every, sort of self observations, and sometimes you sound arrogant, and sometimes you sound like you, you're like, "Oh, this guy's gonna kill himself," and you're like, "No, no, no. I'm just being honest with myself out loud." You definitely. Know? Yeah. You know who's good at it is severe. Like he talks about like when somebody compliments one of his songs, he like he can share it and compliment it himself as the creator without him sounding like a total douchebag. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not good like that. So I do it humorously. And I guess it's the greatest thing you've ever seen. I know. That's one just because I'm uncomfortable. Object, objectively analyzing your own work in front of other people is really fucking hard, man. I want to see a creator squirm. Have me do that. That's how it. you know when you found a shit artist is when they're smiling and having a good time while they're doing the Q&A. And you're like, fuck this guy. That ain't right? They think that's, I don't even need that's to, the you goal. could put their art behind a, a fucking white cloth and not even be able to see it. And I would be able to tell you whether or not it was good based on their, how they, yes, wouldn't yeah. even need to see it. When I talk to people behind the scenes, it's like when money comes up as like primary goal and it's like, dude, it's not, it's not going to work. Like, yeah, we, money have, comes, we have the same problem yeah. there too. We, we probably should care a little more. I definitely do need to care a little more. But well, you know, just like when you build a house and it's, you know, you don't want the roof to leak, right? The house has a purpose. Right. It, so right. when you make art, I mean, to say, you got to live. I don't think it takes a whole lot, but you also might have, you know, other material wants, like like reasonable material wants, like a, a shelter, a little bit of space with some trees and water and shit. And that takes money. So It does. But, you, you know, you can't get to the proper perspective about, money until you do a whole hell of a lot without it downstream from figuring out all the other important stuff first yeah which i think is what, you, yeah. what what we talk about and what the 3cc is about and what's been a ton of fun so on that note it is now 310 i think anybody that might have wandered off is probably back i'm gonna hit you with my sermon and then we'll spend as long as you would like that's not true i'll kick you off fairly we're having a sleepover guys get cozy <laughs> but i i um um, again, you understand all this, so I think you're already ready to go, but, but no holds barred, no punches pulled, your honest thoughts on any of this and anything else, and then, of course, as much time as you'd like, any other questions you might have, happy to answer them. All righty. All right, so hang out for a second. You're, uh, I'm going to leave your microphone on, so you can okay. say, I'm muted if say what good. I, yeah, that's no, all good. good <laughs> My little sermon today, uh... This new, yeah, look at that. Buy my stuff. This book, The Point, you could read it as Harambe. The short story, The Point, by Charles D'Ambrosio, was published on October 1st, 1990, 33 years ago, in The New Yorker, which to this day retains an iron grip on the copyright. There is no free version of the full text on the internet, which is okay. The idea is that you would read the full text on your own time anyway, and we, of course, believe as world champions, quote, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and quote, if you enjoyed the show, pay for the ticket. I won't subject you to any more Harambe. You can read the full text online with a subscription to New Yorker. I just showed you that page, or simply buy it uh, on Amazon. I also showed you that page. I truly do believe you enjoy the show, pay for the ticket. Those are also the two places I found it at. The point. The story, the name of the story, the point, and quickly, is the title a double entendre? We've learned most good film titles, uh, film titles, all titles are double entendres. Uh, we talked with uh, Severe and Dodger, what a coincidence you're on. That wasn't, uh, when I wrote this, I actually wasn't predicting that. Uh, but how memes are data compression and how the perfect meme is as much data as possible compressed into as single, uh, simple an image as possible. As much data as possible into as simple an image as possible is the perfect meme. And that is what a double entendre is. It's data compression. You take uh, two or more meanings, triple entendre, etc., with no additional bytes of data. Two words, nine characters, eight letters, and a space. The point. The point is about Kurt. K-U-R-T, a kid in a rich summer seaside resort community called The Point, someplace like Martha's Vineyard. Kurt, 
13, has found an interesting summer job. He makes sure rich party goers get to their summer homes after they've had too much to drink at parties, particularly those thrown by his mother, an eccentric widow, who gets wasted in front of her son and allows him to see her and all their neighbors in that state. It's hard to tell if Kurt likes doing what he's doing, but he's an honest, thoughtful, soulful kid, and above everything else, he wants to do a good job. One time, Kurt almost didn't do a good job, that is, leaving a guy outside his house on the beach, underestimating the reach of the tide, nearly drowning the poor guy to death. It was Kurt's one mistake. I didn't drown, though. Almost. Really, though, Kurt is just a kid, and these characters are putting too much stock in his abilities, these people that have him chaperone them home. Ask yourself, would you leave your drunk and passed out self under the care of a 13-year-old? Especially after he had already almost drowned a guy. No, you would probably not remember, though. These are rich alcoholics. They do not see the world as normal people do. But why does 13-year-old Kurt have this job? We learn that Kurt's father is dead. He shot himself, and since then, Kurt's mom has started drinking and throwing parties more. Kurt considers himself an expert at guiding these drunks home. He's been doing it since he was 10. The night of the story, he is tasked with escorting the 38-year-old Mrs. Gurney home. So this short story specifically is about him escorting this 38-year-old drunk, hammered woman, Mrs. Gurney, back to her house. Mrs. Gurney laments her life to Kurt on the journey in between bouts of uncontrollable falling down and vomiting on herself. She's at the end of her stint as a trophy wife. And as these things go, she's about to be replaced if she hasn't been already. She's more than aware of the situation, how ridiculous this is, but as noted by one reviewer, quote, This is somebody else reviewing this uh, story. That still doesn't prevent an encounter that I wondered about from early on in the story. What would happen between Mrs. Gurney and young Kurt when they got to Mrs. Gurney's house and he puts her to bed? This was smelling a lot like a coming-of-age story to me, a perfect setup for either a penthouse letter or something much more interesting, or maybe both. And so this viewer projects their own weird sexuality with 13-year-old boys and 38-year-old women onto the story, says, hmm, interesting, I think I know where this story is going. They're horribly wrong. Double entendres, memes and data compression in the point. Kurt likes the routine of getting the drunks home. Their problems, at least at that moment, are easily solvable. As they progress towards Mrs. Gurney's home, we get more of the backstory of Kurt's dad's death, how it was ruled accidental, but it wasn't. How his dad was a Vietnam veteran and how it was Kurt who found him dead, most of his face blown off. We also get to see one of the letters Kurt's dad wrote to his mother while he was in Vietnam as a medic. So that's kind of how this comes to a close, this letter his dad had written. Though the basic action of the story is Kurt walking a drunk Mrs. Gurney home, the heart of the story is Kurt and his dad's death. His dad's death is a specter that looms over the story at large. We do not get all the details of this right away. Instead, D'Ambrosio does out, uh, doles out these details at first. The first mention we get of Kurt's dad's death is at the end of the first paragraph, when father was alive. She rarely drank, but after he shot himself, you could say she really let herself go. On the surface, this is a casual, blunt way to talk about a dead father and a grieving mother, but as the story goes on, we understand why Kurt uses this language. He still hasn't processed his grief about the situation. It isn't until the fourth page that we get another mention of Kurt's father's death. Kurt is talking about a song from his parents' generation and says, It reminded me of my father, who shot himself in the head one morning. Did I say this already? He has, but he's given us a new detail. His father shot himself in the head one morning. Kurt goes on to say this was ruled accidental. Everyone they knew believed his dad had been cleaning out his gun, uh, but his mother told him that wasn't the case at all. And so when you read these high-level stories, just taking a break here for a second, in a discerning way, first he mentions his dad killed himself, and then he mentions his dad killed himself in the morning, and have I said that already? It's a subtle way of telling you this main character themselves is still processing something, and then that is what the story is about. So again, in this letter that his dad wrote to his mom, his dad talks about trying to help a man whose legs and feet had been blown off. The man was going to die, but what uh, Kurt's dad noticed was that the shrapnel hit a can of shaving cream, and so shaving cream 
was shooting everywhere as this guy was dying in this incredibly brutal way. That's what his dad remembered, was the can of shaving cream shooting everywhere. Kurt's father writes, quote, It's a world of hurt. That's the phrase we use. And things happen over here that you just can't keep to yourself. I've seen what happens to men who try. These lines are prophetic in two senses. First, Kurt's father ends up like those men. He ends up killing himself, presumably because he did not talk about or deal with his experiences in Vietnam. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and second, and the subtlety and the whole point of the story, the point... Kurt is uh, currently on the same path as his father. We learn in the very last paragraph it was uh, Kurt who had found his father dead. But same path in that here he is as a medic in, in a way, quote unquote, to these drunk people. Kurt has been carrying this revelation the entire story, that he's the one who found his father. And in the final paragraph he releases by telling us the readers he is not keeping this pain to himself. He is taking his father's advice and revealing the world of hurt he has experienced, thereby breaking the cycle. That cycle, hidden as meaning, compressed data, as a meme, within the very intentionally titled The Point, is the ordinary world of the monomyth, the pig war. Quite literally a war, Vietnam. An old and young pig living as quote-unquote medics in the personal poker hands they've been dealt, so to speak. The father as a shepherd and protector in a world of literal violence. The son as shepherd and protector in a world of a different but equally devastating kind of violence. Kurt even has his own hero's journey. Not in the entire of the story, but uh, the short story, but compressed and left up to the reader to unzip, like a zip file. His father's suicide as his call, the nearly drowned man as his refusal, and so on. What's interesting is we join his journey halfway through as he reflects on its beginning while holding in his hand a piece of paper that literally defines its ending. And he is a Chester, oh, neologism, a Chestertonian hero, G.K. Chesterton, rather than a postmodern one, just an ordinary boy in an extraordinary situation rather than the other way around, as people like to do now, as the left likes to do, who breaks, uh, breaks through by understanding that when it comes to the human animal, salvation is understanding just how ordinary the extraordinary can be, the point. These extraordinary situations will filter for character and archetypes, like a medic, say, the point. And what separates the men who survive this war from those who don't, and not the Crap shoot of bullets and bombs, that's the physics and nature, things you can't control, the first great filter. But in surviving this, one still has to make sense of it or die a different death, maybe a worse one you must process the grief, the point. As G.K. Chesterton said, the point of an open mind is to close it again on something solid, like Kurt, like Kurt, like Kurt has already done, or be doomed, like his father, to leave it wide open, literally forever and that is a special kind of hell grief unprocessed and you have been trained from birth to move into it pay rent and do all the maintenance on your own dime all without ever doing any actual processing that is on purpose 37 year old noticing meme on purpose even 38 year old mrs gurney noticing Processing grief uh, with alcohol, though, and processing it with the momentary attention of a 13-year-old boy who understands her awareness quite a bit better than she'll ever know because she will never ask questions, let alone listen to the answers. That is the job of a medic, the MO of someone actually trying to fix something, something that is actually wrong. What is the problem? Our salvation is to communicate. To talk about it, Kurt knows this. It is his genius, the ordinary genius of a 13-year-old boy. And how does he process his grief? Unlike Mrs. Gurney, unlike his father, he talks about it directly to us in the story, in a story, The Point. Brilliant, brilliant short story. I highly recommend reading it. Oh, there you are. 
I thought a lot of that was relevant uh, even to some of the stuff you said right before I started reading it. Uh, now, I know I mean, you, I, you haven't read this, but... Um, I feel like I've, I lived it. <laughs> I think... Just based off of that description. A lot of us had. And when I remember we read this in class almost 20 years ago, I, I, and I did get the point because I had lived that to some degree. You have this backwards ass situation with this kid with a dead father who's 13 years old and been doing it since he was 10, which just kind of gets mentioned as a casual aside. But that he he has, so you have maybe this genetic component. His father was a medic and here he is doing a very similar thing just by his nature. He seems to enjoy doing it. I think, and I think that's implying he's a good person. I think you and I are kind of that boy to be cringe or whatever, but I mean, that is, I think, why the story just immediately makes sense to certain people. Our, uh, our, our war, kind of like Tyler Durden in Fight Club says, is a spiritual war. Um, and I do think there's all, you know, my grandfather sort of World War II kind of generation type guys being like that. That is one kind of thing. Yeah, that there's no substitute for experiencing it or anything like that. But then there's the other side of it, which is dealing with it. And then there's us here dealing with the societal repercussions of all of the lack of understanding of the history of the past few hundred years, I mean, few thousand years even, all of which is massively relevant to everything we do right now. Rome is massively relevant, even down to government and everything like that. It's, it's interesting. But uh, here he is, he's 13 years old. All the adults in his life are drinking themselves to death in decadence, uh, not unlike uh, how they describe Europe during the Black Plague. Imagine being a little teenager during those times where all the adults are just, the world is ending. And just by your nature, you still make sure they get home to bed safe. Yeah. Something what is that? Works. Why? Why? Who are these boys? What is, like, you know, I don't know. Does, does the species generate a set percentage of them? Is everything going guess- wrong have to do with them? choosing to no longer walk people home they're just like you know what if you want to keep getting hammered that hard good luck i'm gonna start turning out those pockets when you pass out slick it's a great metaphor in that sense too the left is always oh the the right wing attack you're attacking us and in a sense from their perspective it would seem that way if you're the drunken person that gets hammered every night and that makes this poor bastard kid walk you home and then one day he just says, I'm not doing that anymore. A hundred percent, you get that screaming, angry, harpy woman. Call, You're attacking me. No, I'm Look just what your son did. no longer going to do free shit. There's a difference, right? It might feel to you like I'm taking something away. But that was not something that you had earned or, you know, it was just something I was doing because I'm a good person. That's the point. And That's you took it for granted. Yeah, and to again, the point that a, it became an insult. Well, I don't want to seek revenge on the drunken people I've walked home. I really don't. I don't think um, Kurt in this story is. It's again, the story is ultimately about him and his father. M- maybe even to a degree about men. I mean, there's uh, all the women that are drunk. They're all women, right? And all the dudes, in a sense, in this world of the story, the dudes go off and fight the physical war. It fucks them up. They can't talk about it. The women are fighting this mental war. It fucks them up. They can't talk about it. Uh, Mrs. Gurney, in a sense, and she's 38. She's just aged out of her um, trophy wife beauty and knows it. She's about to. She's still... Well, yeah, so she's right on that. I I mean, that's... Cut. What what was his name? Kurt is the main the kid. Kurt. Yeah. He could have been a real shit, you know. But he wasn't. Well, and had he not gone through the hardship that he had mm-hmm. with his father, he probably would have been a shit. I have this just by lack of life experience. Yeah, I have this theory, and you don't have to answer this question, but oh, 
I unplugged my headphones. So. I was pensively crossing my, my legs there to give you this professorial thought, and I unplugged my headphones. Um, fuck, what were we talking about, man? You had a theory. <laughs> I have this theory that this sort of awareness that uh, Kurt in the story has, the point uh, at such a young age, can only be attained, and maybe only ever be attained. Maybe you can't even age into it, but, but by witnessing death. First hand. There's an Alan Watts uh, uh, piece that I listened to where he talks about sudden enlightenment. And it's not something that you can actively pursue. But if these certain things happen to a person unsuspectingly, when they're in a path of life that's honest, like like Kurt was doing something noble. But he witnessed this thing that was so traumatic that it, it forced all of his faculties to choose the line that they're, that they're going to fall into. And you, from that point, that's, you don't go back. It's like, I, I went through something similar where it's like the, the violence, the law enforcement craziness, all sorts of weird shit forced me to like detach from everything. And so when you come back, you see everything. Like everybody has these tales that are just so as uh, as Epicurus, I think, but you can't step in the same river twice, right? Because it's right. new water. The river yep. is flowing. So even though you've on the same spot on the shore, you put your foot in again, it's a whole new river you've just stepped in. So. Yeah, it's interesting. So so uh, the question I was going to ask and said you didn't have to answer, you kind of answered. But like, so you've had one or maybe more than one. You've literally seen a human being die with your own two eyeballs. Is that true? No, I've, I've not seen a life expire. I've what what been, was the um, the gist of what I've you stabbed, I've stabbed a guy. Yeah. So like, uh, I mean, if you're willing to talk about it, I'm genuinely curious. Just, I don't I don't. And and. We're friends, I think we can say that truly at this point, but for what it's worth, we haven't had a ton of these kind of conversations. No, we haven't. No That's judgment right. on my he's end. Gonna, and not, think I'm nuts we're also like live head. streaming, so you know, you can manage your own brand, however, but you're like me. You're like, what the fuck's a brand? So no, I think it's awesome you if, if you're willing to be yourself, and I'll also be <laughs> more than willing to reciprocate. But um, I, I, so in my own theory here, I don't know that I'm convinced it needs to be a literal death. So I'm curious what you seem to have had this change. I've seen a lot of really bad stuff and had to get my own hands dirty just for self-preservation. Like, don't, when, you, when you're a kid going out with the boys for a wild night and you're grabbing all your stuff and you slip your little pocket knife in, in your pocket, you don't ever think you're going to use it for maybe more than opening a bottle of beer. but Things happen, and I was the people I were with took off. I was left behind. I was getting jumped, and I'm sorry. I don't take shit from anybody. Like I respect everybody until I have a reason not to. And if you put me in a corner, you better pack a lunch. How like, um how like how old were you when this was going down? I it was so I last, I was last signed Tuesday to CBS at eighteen. And like, I got, I went from totally sheltered with no friends and no social life to being marquee on, a, on my own talk show, like overnight. So I, I went from, I, I've never tried it to let's try every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So I would find myself in sketchy places because I didn't have anybody there to guide me and be like, little bro, that's not a good move. Well, that's I mean, not so let, not to, so I think that's interesting. I found myself in many sketchy places as well, but it, I got to be honest with myself. It's mostly been by choice. I mean, not necessarily consciously, but. I oh, think yeah, I'm all, I'm, to some I degree, so things. it's that whole, the Buddha story, the whole, all of Buddhism has this sort of creation story of how he's this ultra rich prince who's never seen anything bad. And then one day he just happens to see his father, the king execute some criminal in front of him. And not that the criminal didn't deserve it or it's nothing about that. It's just purely the, the, the real undomesticated violent act of it made him realize that there's. Like, I, I could have seen myself in a many different universes being some stupid, boring, like, college professor. 
you know, or, but anytime I started going too far down one of those roads, it just didn't feel right. And it, in, in almost like a very, it makes you do some unhealthy shit to yourself. Cause, cause you know, there's more out there and you haven't explored it. It was just making any sense at all. Yeah. The cookie cutter prescription for a successful life in this society of like the go to college, get married, have your, have your 3.5 kids, Mm -hmm. all these things. They're all anchors. They all, without you even realizing it, they seem like trophies and status mile markers, but they're tethers. And like, I used to, man, I thought, man, I would be an awesome husband. I'll be an amazing dad. And I still think that, but that never came my way. So it's like, still I'm going to do everything that I want to do. Like, why not? So I haven't been in the workforce for almost a decade. I travel when I have a little bit of pocket money, but like total vagabond style, like every day is the adventure. I'm here for the experience, not the, not the shekels at the end of it. I'm not chasing paper. That is your life is the experience of it. Right. I mean, it's it. I got scars all over me. Yeah. I got tattoos all over me. It's like, I've been there. So, I've been, uh, I've been places, seen things. No, no regrets, would you say? No, but that. Yes, also you're going to do the honest analysis. Well, so, I mean, so here's. Like, I, you have to get the distance from the events to actually get the perspective to, to view them through. Like, I, I used to see my life as all these failed creative attempts. Like careers that just ah oh, why did why am I not a radio star why do, am I not working on movie sets filming, but what I what I realized was I was aggregating the skill sets right to to be in this like final form in the third act of whatever this shit show going on in the world is like I'm weaponized and I'm I'm that single guy with no kids no mortgage. Sent, put me in coach yeah i, mean, I don't i mean up. sometimes it honest i i go through these well let me ask it to you here you're the guest i mean do you ever get the feeling that that is not by accident that all this shit that you that happened to you even to maybe down to the point of like physically where you were born and who your parents were and whatever they might have done to you and then you know the next year's school and all that maybe even some of the people you met that like the Maybe 10 years ago, it seemed like all of that was for no fucking reason whatsoever. And over the past 10 years, these little things keep fucking happening where I almost start to feel like somebody, yeah, like inserted me into the story. My, my role might be very, very small, but I, but I'm starting like, I think everybody might've been sort of inserted into this story by let's call it a higher power, higher intelligence. 1,000%. One thousand percent, and I, I, maybe in the circle, the skill sets. Like we talk about a lot, me and Severe. Like there's so many chiefs and no Indians, mm-hmm. and it's like I'm a chief one million percent, but I'm also like a savage Indian for. It's the paradox we've, that we're, I we're approaching here. With um, I'm glad this is getting into a real conversation. This is great, but that's what we're approaching here with three CC, right? It's the group of how do we do that? So we're all quite clearly have this philosophy, and I agree with it. I think, you know, you are the emperor of your own self. Um, and I honestly think this was the thinking behind the, the, the written law of the United States that was, as it was formed. So number one, you are the emperor of your own self. However, we acknowledge the reality that there's two and three and four and five and six, however many emperors, and that some of them are living next door to you. Right, so where does that empire end and and become the other person's empire? So then you just start building these logical boundaries and the idea is the least number of boundaries but all the necessary ones that still preserve as much of a, you know, imperial individual as possible. So I'm sure you and I could find 20 million things we'd disagree on on vehemently, you know, particularly about art and stuff like that, not, you know, in a friendly way, but... yeah. How do we, so, so how did you come to that, to, to be on the one hand, this, this uber mensch individualist, and on the other hand, understanding that, uh, you need to also be part of the tribe as the, as the Indian. 
so to speak? So for me personally, like, and I'm not trying to have like a, a little violin moment. Yeah, sure. Like, what no, I'm at, I asked. But like, I, I didn't, I didn't grow up with the friends and the love life and all of this. I got, I got made fun of for being smaller and smarter. And I got beat up a lot because of the, the area around me and, and my beautiful porcelain complexion. Uh, so like I was the kid who never <laughs> got to be involved, but I, I also know how it feels to, to be that. So now that I'm, I spent all that time by myself building my own skill sets and enriching myself with what I love. I can do it better than people that are assholes. So cool. You uh, want to do the asshole thing? Like it's a good, in the smoke I hate section. to do it, but I've just been notified that the timer is still. <laughs> we got two minutes. You have a minute and five seconds. That, I mean, that was, I mean, we could, so it's, we're honestly not terribly far off. We've got like maybe, maybe 20. We could, we if could, it kicks me, I'm going to try to click it. Just click it back. Uh, yeah. Try and reset the meeting and yeah, I'll jump right back. Let's keep it going if we can. Uh, and then yeah. if you still got the gilded there, if I'll, I'll just make a new one real quick and I'll, I'll say some nonsense. I'll talk to but, the, but yeah, I mean, there, yeah, there's a lot to talk about with this and how it, all right, let me, um, let me just reset it now. Since we have less than a minute, yeah, and I don't want okay. you to get down a thought that's good, and then it kicks. All right, so let's, I'm booting you. See ya. End meeting. This is so dumb. So dumb. While we're doing that, let's get the, uh, let's get that up there at the chat, and uh, we'll just restart this. So it's kind of hilarious that apparently you can just keep redoing them. So why not just take off the time limit and let's get him that link. Bingo. And uh, as soon as I hear him here, we'll bring him back up. But looking at the chat, so have not looked at it here in a minute. Let me uh, pull up some supers actually, see if I missed anything there. It's not showing anything here or there. All right, I'll come back and look at that here in a second. And uh, there he is. And so anyways, then I was like, <laughs> how, did, how did they get there? Uh, I think I just need to, um, it probably, yeah. Mm. Yes, it's, it's important they see. There you are. There you are. Wow, that's super and, ghetto. Uh, so I said, so you can just start another one and keep talking. So stupid. Supposed to this is what it takes, kids. Subscription like, model easy. crap. He, it, people take for granted the content that someone like yourself drops in different formatting. They think it's just like quick well, one and done. Like it's, work I, behind. Yeah, I bitch about that myself. I really do, and I'm trying to get better at that. But I, th I, I honestly, from day one, and I, it's still up on the YouTube channel. But I think it was the very first video I ever put up there was that with the whole Charlie Chaplin and and uh, fucking Sandlot thing. And I, I really do. I mean, this the actual words in the speech of the great dictator get a little globo homo y at certain points. Uh, so not word for word or anything like that. Uh, I honestly really like the pickling the beast as a work of art, as a, as a metaphor, as like a painting that wouldn't even need words, right? Yeah. I mean, the Sandlot is is on the level of the short story, The Point. I really think it is. I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, I'm going to have to rewatch it now. I'm removing I mean, yeah, I... the, the movie side from it, maybe, just the story. It's a, Maybe it could be executed slightly better in certain places, but I honestly don't know if I'd even say that. I mean, I've watched it as recently as a few years ago. And, and I have a bad memory and head trauma, so it's like I still remember. Even like, like the, the subtleties of, of the Sandlot, like the main character kid is not the kid that ends up pickling the beast, which is crazy if you think about how unusual that is in a movie. It's, yeah, it is. Like, the, like your main like character is actually the side. He's the observer. He allows you to like really get into the story a lot more than you would have if like Benny the Jet had been the main character. Because we all ain't Benny yeah. the Jet. We all feel much more like the fucking new kid, you know, who's a little bit smart and has something to offer. But it takes a whole summer of making a fool of yourself before all the the group of dudes will be like, oh, this fucking oh, you and I, okay, all right, we'll listen to you, you know. Yeah. 
but but he has to provide value to them to get accepted like the you know the babe ruth ball and all that which is not they're not evil asshole kids it's just how the world works like you can't just move to a new town go find a group of kids that has known each other for 10 years and be like i'm your new best friend they're not assholes when they tell you no you're not they're normal kids Yeah. yeah and his mom in the sandlot gives him that exact advice which is crazy it's his single mom who's married to like that's really weird for the that that it's not just some normal happy couple in that movie you know he's the, he's a child of divorce and like that's going on he's all awkward with his new dad who's fucking dennis leary of all people you know that movie is fucking great darth vader is james earl jones plays reverse darth vader you know He's literally reverse Darth Vader. He's Sorry, killing me. I didn't mean to go on a sand. I really like that movie. But pick no, it. it's like you just flashbacks are like flying through my yeah, head. Yeah, so I mean, like, I, 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 I that fun, that story always resonated not just in the like cartoon, have fun during a summer and fight a big giant dog. That's just one one version of that pattern. The big defeat, slaying the dragon, right? I mean, the Sandlot is a slaying the dragon movie, but then it has the unexpected next level twist of like gk chesterton it's only the man who is brave enough to 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 fight a dragon that finds out it's only a lizard and the sandlot has that it's just a dog like it's this whole thing they built up you know it's like literally a cartoon and then at the end it's just a regular that that confused the fuck out of me as a kid right wait a minute what that's dumb i thought it should be this giant huge and now that i'm older i'm like god damn that movie's good every that Whoever wrote that, man, like really thought about it. It's a good movie. Nice. Anyway. Uh, But then it's also, you know, but it's fun. Like it's not this, it's this, like they're about to, they think they're going to die, but they're having a blast, you know, making s'mores and camping and fucking doing all nature shit. Did you miss that America? Engineering shit. And yeah, dude, that like felt like my childhood. We were the last to play until the street lights came on we Drink had a literal coat. damn sandlot man that i played at all the time it was incredible and we took it for granted and all the fucking older why... brother younger brother shit and uh, yeah that was our group it's beholden to us now to bring that shit back and it was way more fun than video games or anything ever was you yeah. know man all right i don't know man apparently i'm pretty nostalgic about it let's take a look at the chat here real quick uh sly park have not seen uh cookie what land shark said i did not see what land shark said crash kid channel member agreeing i know we have some people coming up on six months so i'm looking for that white sticker haven't seen it yet crash kid loves the sandlot uh linda love that's what i knew welcome linda love which is another one we'll have on here on a one-on-one at some point runs the lady world champion at gilded channel Williams Channel, that's William Maines, another guy we'll have for sure on the show, but Sandlot is epic. Gotta make my kid watch that. Yeah, if you need a movie for your kid to watch that is not degenerate filth, but also you don't want them to watch a Christian movie, Sandlot, there's a little bit of swearing in it, just like kids talk, like a little odd shit here and there, no F words. There's Wendy Peppercorn. Ugh. Just this little vignette story in the middle of the movie about squints and this rapey shit he does, and then she likes him because of it. How true. Right? That movie is fucking Dude, incredible. Such a creeper, that well, I smiles. know, but like, yeah, but then they get married. Like, it's like that. Are women not kind of fucking like, is that not a big part of what is the problem? <laughs> They like it, Mikey. The autist has a good gorilla story to tell us, but it reminds me of shit I used to saw at the zoo, and this is fucking true. It's this female gorilla and this male gorilla, and she's fucking slapping at him and picking at him and pulling his little foot. You're fucking with him, and he's just trying to ignore her, trying to ignore her, trying to ignore her, and she's fucking like literally 10 minutes of this shit. He just kind of moves away. She falls. Fucking finally, she just like pokes his eye, and he just fucking like a very humanoid, like, fuck this shit. Turns around, and as soon as he literally like turns around like this, and she just turns her ass to him and sticks it up in the air. It's like fuck me. That's all she wanted the whole time. That's all it takes. And human you know. women, ladies, you do this too, right? I mean, I think this whole right again the point you need to communicate and process the grief or whatever it is. But this whole feminist 
fracking dude. Look at my vest line. They don't. They go find some dude who's minding his own business and start slapping him a little. Right. So I'm saying you work with primates and human behavior starts to look very, very different. Those women want to get. Just not with a fist. Hey. It's all the same. She punched with a fist or punched in a different way and a different kind of violence, which it is still by strict definition of the word violence. So. I don't know. This weird to me. This whole. I know so many people that require relationships. Mm, like they have like this whole parallel set of, of priorities about the work and, and their identity on one side, but at the same time, they can't be alone. And it's just weird to me. Like, do you talk I've to yourself? Dated, dude, oh. it's like, y'all don't know shit about yourself. So that I, spent. I, I, I've told, I think I could be marooned on an Island for the rest of my life. It's not something I hope for. I'm not that right. much of a misanthrope, but I could be okay. Like, I'd, and but I'd be staring fucking to you. I'd be talking to myself like a madman, laughing. It's still like, man, I. Am. I do that now. Shit, man. Dude, Eight hour work suck. day. By the end of it, I've it's got a- Wilson on one fucking counter. You know, shit, man. This look He's at this shit. Am I? I'm not lying. Kind this is the shit that comes. Ninety nine percent of my creations are just shit of myself, so I can talk to it. We, I, we might just be geniuses. Well, not so, sure. so let me take. A, uh, I think that is maybe, hopefully, the genius, and why I believe that this strategy will work is that, in the truest sense, all of the the art you you or anyone makes, when it when it's truly great, it it's because it is a form of communication, and that it is communicating something that is true. Ah, uh, so you could show, and the simp the the. And then what makes it like truly excellent from the perspective of an artist as like a technically skilled person is, you know, how efficient was it? You know, did you, did you use the least amount of shit that you needed? Like a, like a very sleek, you know, fucking Tesla car. Right. And like with mine specifically, like I have tens of thousands of fully completed images and half of them are me venting. Yeah, like, no, I've noticed that about. So you do the self-portrait thing, I do too. Yeah, that's a that's a. The, a the, the, you know how much shit I got from the memers about that? Like you can't put yourself in it. They don't understand. They, well, they think it's it's like a egotistical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but it's not. Listen, it's guys, like a, not it's like a, it's an Aspergery thing. <laughs> it is. It's like yeah, the, like, no, and, and I put yeah, myself I as like <laughs> hyper overpowered. Yeah. And it's like, that's not what I see myself as. That's the, the wishful. Yeah, it's like, a momentary I, uh, expression of uh, some emotion or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And so then you'll like, probably look at it later and be like, man, that looks fucking dumb. And then you'll look at it later and be like, man, that looks cool. You know, it just looks. I used to. Now I, I don't drop it. I have tons that nobody have ever, has ever seen. And those are just for me. But then I everything I drop, I have confidence in. Except for when I try to be funny and do like an actual topical thing to be part of the community. It's like I could be funny on the mic, but it doesn't translate to my art. And that's that's cool. That's why I hold up the memers as the geniuses they are. They do it. They've inspired me to get in here. I don't I mean I've seen some I pretty can't good do what they do. I don't know. You're selling you yeah, I think you probably could, but but, but they I, can't do what I do. That that's very true. Very true. It's like of what I think is so 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 again you you create all this stuff and the very best stuff you make for yourself specifically and then often the very, you don't even bother showing it to anybody like I see that pattern with people like us um you create the art in order to have a conversation with an equal in a sense I don't know uh you you so anyway what I'm getting at and why I think that what we're doing with 3CC is the way to go is that I think that this that this is the art I, in so many ways I'm trying to create are these conversations. And I don't really, I'm no longer interested in explaining like why I think that or what I'm doing or how I'm preserving it or what my audience is or anything like that. Um, I think I've finally begun to understand like what we are in while we are in it. Like as if you were in the collapsing Roman empire and like had this epiphany that like, holy fucking shit, it's going down, isn't it? But like 200 years before it really fucking was gone. One of those people, again, as you understand, not bragging, I just feel like honestly analyzing myself, I'm starting, I'm close to becoming one of those people. Now there's still a lot of shit bitched about it in this very show that makes no fucking sense to me. 
But uh, I don't think we'll ever get to that final. Right. We yeah. Know it it's all. a waste of time. Uh, Student forever. Um, here, here's, here's kind of, okay. My, my tie it all together sort of thought. So this, this, I'm sure you heard the idea of free energy, creating energy from nothing. And there's all these free energy machines that are all fake on YouTube and shit like that. Cause you literally can't, can't do it. Of course you can't just create energy out of nowhere. That is true in physics. I do not believe that that is true. in let's call it anthropics, right? Human physics. So you and I can create free energy. And we can do it by communicating. In fact, I believe we can do just about fucking anything if we sit down and have an honest conversation. We're honest with each other, but we're all honest with ourselves and honest about ourselves. And that doesn't just mean when we're doing shitty, we're honest about it. Also that we're doing awesome, that you're fucking honest about it. And so I honestly think that this is, and, and it's not an original idea, sit down and talk to people. It's not quite that simple. I don't know... What's going to come out of this? I have some ideas. I also don't, like, I can't control specifically who's going to get involved and when and when it'll click for certain people. You are exactly the kind of person I expected to be on the, the very cutting edge of starting to understand that there's something more to this than just this half-assed technical problem kind of show. That all is what it is. We haven't even, again, really started doing what, what we want to do. Or I should say I saying we because there's more than one me but you know with this whole project and then again how you said there's things you can do that i can't do and vice versa and whatever i mean i've been watching all this these people sort of show themselves since trump brought a lot of people into the sunlight in good and bad ways not just exposing bad people but giving good people the energy to get back into the fight that was huge i was one of them yeah. um and then we start talking to each other. But yeah, so you're right. Most of the time, people are in it for themselves. Nothing ever comes for it. It's all people trying to get some, you know, payoff out of it. If you just don't quit, you'll eventually, something like you and I will run into each other. And we get that creative conversation going. We listen to each other. We start to trust each other. You know, you do a few logos for me. I have you on the show. You make stuff. You sell it. You keep them. It's like it doesn't... You clearly understand that I'm not interested in that, that there's a there's a beyond and further down the line timeline thing that I'm working on. Yes. Um, and I understand that, that you have a very specific vision and that well, I know it, it paradoxically not, is, not it, all my shit is going to work for you. Well, yeah, right. And it isn't, okay. it isn't. Right, yeah. So again, it's, I've, I've learned enough now to know that, number one, like you can't control something like this entirely. You're sort of shepherding and herding and farming and blah, 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 blah. You're doing the... The old white European engineering, right? If you want a river to flow somewhere, then you need to set up little things along the way and redirect it. That kind of engineering. Um, And then, of course, time needs to pass to let people expose themselves as good or bad. There's still people that haven't, you know, done that and all of that. But if the problem is so huge, which I think it is, which has been built up for, let's say, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 years, 100 years even if it is, if, it's a, if it takes 100 years to shovel dirt into a big pile, then I got to believe it takes 100 years using the same shovel to spread it back out again so it's nice and level. And so I think we have, assuming we survive everything, probably close to 2,000 years to go just to get back to normal if there's no fuck i don't i think that's a pessimistic way like i think well that's also a very 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 fast amount of time in the grand scheme of things like you know that's not that many different generations of people fruit flies just had twice that many generations while we've been talking on this show you know what i mean that's the other thing about understanding the time and and how it Again, with this this book, The Point, how his father, who kills himself, has a son who overcomes the thing that made his father kill himself, mostly because of his father killing himself. Like, his father doing that might have saved his son from doing that down the road. It's so fucking yeah, weirdly... His empathy. Well, so then, what, is, what does Kurt need to do if he has a son to bring this full circle, and then we're about it for, and we'll call it good. It's a good place to stop, but but... Kurt figures it all out. He doesn't kill himself. He raises a functional family with a wife with which he has a good relationship, and she's not an alcoholic because he's gone through all this and learned about it and found a woman that went through it, and she doesn't want to live like that. And they have this kid, and now he's us. 
child. This the child perfect there is, safe world is not enough. There's more to that. I need to sequel, go explore. That, it almost is like destined. He's destined to grow up to be a, a tranny fucking activist, like for the other team, because Kyle did it so well and kept all of the things that made him so rock solid from his his son. That it's like you have to fall down. Like, I hate that cliche. You got you got to fall down so you know how to get out. Yeah, but, but it's so there's true. There's a reason it's like, a cliche. You don't, know, you don't know anything about yourself until you've been punched in the mouth and you know how strong you are and how weak they are. It, everybody's well, I mean, a boogeyman. I, I think and, Kurt and has so the not. challenge, the weird fatherly challenge, of needing to fail in front of a person you're trying to teach to be a man in order for them to not be ah. over, overwhelmed by your shadow. That's... Yeah, I didn't even think about like like that's where it gets weird is like he's going to need to somehow simulate those experiences for his son to learn the same lessons. But can you simulate this? Isn't the whole point of waking up is because you really had something like that happen to you? I bet. What if you found out a year later that it was that your, your father set it up? Yeah. Yeah. It's like everything was false. You start binge drinking. Yeah. Next thing you know, you do cocaine in the in the dive bar with that hooker that you were talking about from the first segment. The, well, I think it maybe ones. speaks to what all truly good people are interested in is they want to know what is reality. Like they don't want to be lied to if it's bad or good, or they just want to be told the truth. And I think our government could learn from that is we can up the um the reading level, so to speak, of how we get treated. I think they might be, the elites might be quite surprised by how much help we can be. They can go back to just chilling in their mansions. We'll, we'll, ha we'll handle it. There's quite a lot of smart people out there, I think. Well, yep. there's, there's a lot of very not smart people also. So it's very, There's a whole lot more of that. But that's okay. Like, Maybe we're doomed. I mean, it does. It starts to feel like this whole pig war thing that we're in. It really, there's mostly like, you know, four out of five people are just totally non-participants. They're just getting thrown around as, as they're, Le, they're LeBron James's point guard. <laughs> yeah, whatever that Chalmers or whatever that idiot was. Uh, anyway, uh, and then you get people like you and I who sort of wake up and want to get involved, and yet then we admit it, immediately run into this brick wall, which is the people that woke up generations and generations and generations ago and own everything. And they don't really want to give anything to us for free. And so it, you, what, you end up in this, amazing. all the smart people fight each other with wielding these hordes of stupid people. It's, it's the pig war. Yeah, it's Lord of the Flies shit. But I mean, and then you got you know, say we win this battle, do we just is it do we become the old? Do we start acting that way, like by no choice of our own? Do we just become? Is that just how you become? That's no, that's when the, if if we if we can stop like fighting one another and actually point at all of our arms at the at the actual enemy mm -hmm. and we do win, that's when the work starts. Right. Like, Start. You just set it all over. You reset it again, and then you're the asshole. Like now we can. But then you've got to be the kind of dad Kurt needs to be, right? So it's like when you win the revolution. Maybe the one thing missing from our American law, although it was strongly hinted at, not even hinted at, directly said, the the, the tree of liberty must be watered from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants, both. They didn't, what they did not literally legislate was a purge. I don't think you can. Uh, but, but again, if I you, if you, if you, organically occur, kind of. I mean, this whole big fight, this whole World War III, I, I mean, the vibe, I get where the vibe is coming from. And I think the elites are trying to redirect that vibe to get us all to fight each other. Definitely. And then they slip through and start the cycle again. And they've been doing this for God knows how long. To get all the little people, all the little young pigs, to just suddenly kind of turn around and realize that behind both the front lines of each army is an old pig who know each other and are best friends. Could be an interesting time. Dodger, Man. thank you for joining me. Uh, super great talk. We will have many more. Uh, and again, super appreciative of all the things you understand and the way you are and um, and that you're willing to let this be a process for me that makes it easy for me. Thank you. I'm tremendously proud to to be here with you today, dude. It's like, like I keep telling you in the emails, like the trophies for me are the moments 
and I admire the the dents that you've left in your first round and now that you're back like the fact that you even acknowledge what I do is huge to me so like I'm you got a pit bull like sitting on your porch now and like whatever you like I'm I'm here for it and to the best of my abilities and if I can't provide it then I know the top tier ones who can cuz it's mission forward bro I super appreciate my autistic side can't help but notice that you've obviously struggled your whole life trying to explain this shit to people but I get it man I, I ain't too many words you're not doing this speech again it's me I'm different I I got gotcha. you you had me at hello here we go we're just getting started you had me and hello and i miss my wife and show me the money i love help black me. people help me help you john my neighbors right now <laughs> Dude, i can't even say that, that jerry Maguire. uh i love black people scene just happened in real life in in my studio I have a I have an inner black man that shows up on our nightly show, and he's Such a, a rapper himself. Fucking he's weird planet, brother. man! You're weird. We're weird people. We're weird apes. You love it. You love it. You understand it's the journey, and we uh we don't know where we're gonna end up, but it'll probably inner circle. It'll be that interstellar black hole or something. But we'll just send messages to our past daughters who will just be four years old and say, oh, my God, this must be my our dads from a future black hole telling us how to build a spaceship in Morse code. She gets it. I wish I had $100 billion. I'd just make movies that stupid. That guy got fun. Someone's like, yeah, let's make that movie. We can do it. My brother owns a hey, company. Hey, man. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, okay? You too, world champions. We'll talk. At, uh, again, I'll talk to you in the again, Gilded John. about um, getting on one of your guys' weeknight things here. I do I do want to do more than that. I had a weird week. I'll tell you more about that too, but I'm back on track. Take it easy. All right, brother. Have Thanks a good again. rest of the Sunday. Let me get this off of here so I don't actually uh, accidentally. Yeah, I don't know. To fucking Zoom. I'll practice on it. Uh, I'm heading out myself as well. Thank you, Dodger, for joining us. Uh, that, that short story really is highly excellent. Uh, oh, that was just a little summary we did there. If you're a reader, or even if you're not, it is quite good. I don't make any money off of it. I don't have an affiliate link for it. I just think it is a good story. The point. Charles D'Ambrosio. Charles of Ambrosia. Chat, thank you everyone who joined us. Markets and Moto, David Smith, Lady Mimi still here. It's true, Mamnon. Too black to understand. I get you. I feel you on that one. It's a weird plan. It says Disco Daphne. Goodbye. Again, it's an ongoing thing. I don't care who you are. If you troll us or clown or don't take it seriously, you will be on here once and then not again. I mean, it is what it is. It's up to you. You determine your own level of involvement in Project Mayhem. But uh, as for me, <laughs> David Smith, show me the money. I'm glad we got some Jerry Maguire fans in there. That would have seemed real weird. Oh, uh, that is it. I think I'm going to close it down. I'm going to close down this little uh, guest test. It was good to have you all here today. I am Harambe Phone. Until next time, remember, you are world champion. World champ. What? You're world champ. You're world champion. You was it was turn up volume. Volume? Volume. You world champion, don't let your memes be dreams.